Welcome back, guys. Uh, it's Kibler from the Brothers Geek Out podcast, and we have an absolutely amazing guest on today. He's the guy that inspired us to kickstart off our own podcast. Uh, it's Luke Bug, the Geek is Still. How are you doing, bro? I am very well, thank you. It's always, always fun to speak with you, buddy, whether it's in person or through a computer screen. It's always a joy to sit back and just geek out with you, as, as we have done now for many years. We have, bro. We have. We've been on an astonishing journey. And it's coming around full circle because... It is. We 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 met properly. I can't remember where it was, but I know Aquaman kind of kickstarted everything. Yeah, that that was the big event. That was well, that was our first like sort of corporate event where we met. We we've met yeah. at Comic Con throughout the past. Yes, but, that's right. Yeah, the Aquaman uh, premiere, which was a, a, a just an amazing experience. But that's when we first sort of started our the little blogging adventure, as it were. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I remember uh, I came off social media for a moment because I was like, I need a break. And and I was like, you know, I, I need some time off to kind of rethink things. And I remember getting that WhatsApp message from you saying, Kibbs, where you disappeared to? We need to talk. And like most of the listeners right now, guys, if you don't know, like l- the links are all in the description. But just in general, like go follow uh, the geek is still his podcast like it really inspired us on a on a on a massive scale but what Thank it you. did in that moment was he reached out to me to say kibs something's happening get your suit on get yeah. down to this venue and <laughs> it opened up a you're the guy who started off with all the opportunities to open up doors for us as well which is absolutely amazing and when 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 you can do that like you know it's it's a great honor, bro. Like I have been on this journey the past couple of years and did not realize how how much it would take off and where it would go and the people you meet in the process. I mean, I'm always in aura of when you guys are speaking to people like, well, you did in 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 in, in Smallville when you did the talk and in front of yeah. you know all them people and it's like, oh my god, that's amazing! Like how and you were saying that if you're not nervous. You're not ready, and and yeah. that's such a big key thing because it's 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 helped me along the way when it comes to some of the stuff that I've done. But when you're speaking to people from like the movies, bro, that's that's just like on a different, insane level where you're like, I'm just your everyday geek. How is this happening? Yeah, no, and it's and that's what it is. It's always a, a pinch me moment whenever mm. I get an opportunity, whether it. You know, it's to to speak with anyone that's creative and and has their passion out there in the world. I want to I want to speak to them. It, it's somebody that's writing their own comic. It could be somebody that's created a film. It could be somebody that's got a vision. I want to speak with people that that are passionate. But yeah, this project of, of mine and and of yours over the years, it, it's led me to some, as you said, pinch me moments. Like I've I was trying to go through i tried to sort of journal as much Mm. as i can um when it's a big event or just a a trip to london and i was writing down the experiences that i've had i mean it's it's one thing to to focus and be nostalgic on the past and it's it's a fine balancing act to not only have that nostalgia but to keep one eye on the back door and one eye on the front door to see where you've been and, and where you're going and yeah, I was making a list of all the people that I've spoken with, and it's I, I get told off for name dropping, but if it's but it, 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 does, <laughs> it feels like that. But yes, I've I've had opportunities to meet Kevin Smith and interview Zachary Levi, who was my first like big celebrity interview. I had like two days to prepare for that. It was my first red carpet interview, and I was bricking it breaking it i remember and i remember <laughs> it was but that that was you know you you were my cameraman for that as always you're a fantastic jimmy olsen which is what happened on that aquaman event i was like dude yeah. i i'm sworn to secrecy i can't tell you what we'll be doing but i can tell you that you need to be at this place at this time and yeah and that turned out it was going to be for that um aquaman pre-party and premiere afterwards yeah. we met james one and 
Jason Momoa came out and smashed a quindent over his leg. <laughs> but it was it was that moment and moments like that where I get to speak with people that make the films and the stories and the comics that I adore. There's no other way to thank somebody than to to sit down and speak with them face to face and learn more about how that project was an idea to a final project. So we've, we've had some fantastic adventures over the years and yet yeah, there's lots more to come, buddy. No, definitely. Definitely is. Definitely is. I, uh, I'm, I'm still, yeah. In that moment of like, pinch me is this reality. Like how, how, how we've got some, we've had the pleasure of being on some great opportunities and moments and I've got to share a lot of them with you, bro, which is a pleasure, bro. I'm telling you, uh, but like with the next Aquaman coming out, I mean, how, how you yeah. how you feeling? With, with, what's what's I'm excited? I mean, there's not been too yeah. many trailers, which is which is what I like. Yeah. But um, as you mentioned that right now, I'm looking forward. You can't see like this is all very well maintained. This this image that people are looking at behind the scenes is a very different story. <laughs> right now, there's Christmas presents and wrapping paper all around me because I've been doing that today. But in front of me is my wall of weird, as it were. Mm. And I've got photographs from there. And you're on there. I shall show you a picture afterwards of, of you, Tasman, uh, and I at the Shazam premiere. Oh, yes. There's another picture of us at Batman. There's a wonderful picture that I, I'm a big fan of. It's when we went to the Birds of Prey premiere. And I got to stand between Margot Robbie and Elizabeth Winstead. And um, the wonderful... Um... Now, in that moment, I, I was so excited that I did call her Ramona Flowers from Scott Pilgrim <laughs> because it's one of my favourite films and it's, it's the character that I've just got a huge fascination with. I was like, I'm very sorry, I've called you Ramona Flowers. And she was, luckily, she was very cool with it. But anyway, I digress. There's also a picture in front of me of our first quotes that happened from that Aquaman film. Mm. We got to see the film and then Warner Brothers, who kindly invited us, they asked us for our first takes, our first sort of um, hot takes of the film. And um, you probably remember yours because you've got it. I know you've got it printed off as well. Yes, I do. Yes, I mine do. Were, mine was pretty standard. It was watch this film on the biggest screen you can. And and that quote was used and it was put on in magazines and it was yeah. on a few posters and it was on a bus stop. And it was for me, it was like, wow, that's that's bro, it was in all the trailers as well, bro. All the post trailers yeah, that came it out. Was, um, yeah, that's it. It was on the TV trailer because my sister called me up. Now, my sister knows that I, I do stuff and I go to London now and again. Normally she says, Luke, could you walk the dog for me today? And I was like, sorry, mate, I'm in London. And she would say, fine, I'll find somebody else. But she phoned me up. She said, Luke, I've just seen your name on TV. I'm like, what, what, what's going on? Is it, is, is it like court roundup or something? What's going on? Is it, am I in trouble? She was like, no, I've just seen your name on the Aquaman trailer. And it was like, it was a blink and you'll miss it sort of thing. But it was a very exciting moment and, and cool for my sister to think, oh, yeah, she's he, he's sort of almost making a name for himself with his ulterior secret identity, which was cool. But that was one of those moments where, you know, you've got to remember those moments to see where you've come from sort of thing. And that's why that one is printed off and it's stuck on my wall. And I've got plenty of copies of the newspaper that it was in, in my yeah. scrapbook, because I'm an absolute hoarder. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm exactly the same. Uh, that's an unreal moment. I mean, we always talk about legacy on the podcast. We always talk about it's not, it's about, as you said, the passion, the love, and to see that on there, it's unreal feeling still to this day. Like the newspaper clipping for me was the 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 one that hit me in the chest, and I was like, oh my god, like it's there, it's in in the paper, it's in. They have a date. My 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 great 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 grandchildren can go back and see that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, they can go back in the timelines and and see all those facts. But yeah, that is it. Like if it's. Mm. You know, a physical thing like that. Everything now, as we know, is it's electrical, it's digital. But there's something about now, something that used to be so common to have something printed, like a newspaper or a book or a magazine. Now it's quite a rarity. And um, to see your name in something like a magazine or a newspaper or a bus stop poster, bus it's um, it's an exciting moment. It is an exciting moment. Bless you, man. Bless you great memory and more came after that which is just absolutely amazing you've uh excelled my friend in, in in so many ways and you you did this podcast 
and now you're on a new journey. Yeah, it's the same sort of journey, but <laughs> it's just, yeah. there's just different. Again, though, it's something that's branched out. So the, the podcast of Still was always, it started off as a hobby, still mm-hmm. is a hobby. I still love doing it. I've got some uh, fantastic guests lining up already for um, for next year. Not just people from the world of comics and entertainment, but again, people that have used their passion and helped it work for them more. Mm. But yeah, from though that original project of of podcasting, I have um, I've joined forces with my, my local Comic Con, Portsmouth Comic Con, and yes. an event that I first found out about from a press release in 2018. I was like, finally, my town is known for for music and festivals. It does a fantastic yeah. Victorious festival, and I was like, it's the one thing they haven't done. It's a Comic Con. Let's see how they go with this. And um, I applied for press from day one, and I was like, "Let's let's see what it has to offer." And from that first weekend, I I fell in love with not only the event but the team that worked behind it, the hard work and dedication to putting on an event that is making waves in the world of convention entertainment. We've all been to cons, we've all enjoyed cons, we've all seen the good and the bad, but this particular event for me, it's something that it's. It's got comics and family entertainment at its val- at its sort of core. They're doing fantastic things to make it different and more fun each year. They want guests there. They want high level entertainment and just a, a great weekend for everybody. And I, I've seen some of their plans for next year that I'm excited about. Um, sneak peeks. <laughs> yeah, now I've got some sneak peeks that I'm allowed to announce soon on on this new project, and awesome. that is yes, um, and that is the um, the Portsmouth Comic Con podcast. They they reached out and we had a few meetings where they told me about what's coming over the years and what their plans are, and they said, "Would you like to help us with season two of their podcast?" And I was like, "Yeah, let's let's fr- let's throw some more work on my plate because I, I don't <laughs> like I don't like being quiet. I, I have trouble." being still I'm, I'm getting better at it a few special people are making me take a step back and go slowly but it was a project that i knew i wanted to help out with because mm-hmm. as well as being an ambassador for superman i am i'm a big ambassador for this event it's such a fantastic time you, you came one year i'm hoping you're going yes, to come next I did. year as of well of course of course bro definitely i've popped it into my calendar already yeah. and it's like i really enjoyed the first one but as you said it's the 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 work and the passion that goes behind it it's in your hometown so it oh that gives it that extra special feel to it uh and it's 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 events are not easy to run as you said the good no. comes with the bad but when it's good it's good bro and like you know oh, they yeah. had the delorean there the the cosplay outfits they yeah. had the different gaming sections it's, it was really nice bro so i can imagine how far it's come to now and what they're looking to do moving forward because it just can only get bigger and better that's what is is special about it i mean after um there's always that fun moment on on the sunday or the end of each weekend when it will start to wind down and and a voice will go over the tannoy saying don't forget big announcement we'll be back again next year and they will announce it then Uh, and it's always exciting but the guys um nick and kurt especially who are on the most recent episode but i've met a lot of people that work behind the scenes for this particular event and there is just that absolute army of hard-working creative people that are putting this event on and yeah it's it's going to be a fun time if they can pull off what they've said and that they pulled off everything else they've said over the years it's going to be yet another fantastic weekend they like it's not necessarily having a systematic approach of how to run a convention they want to make it as good as it was the year before with a little bit extra. So they are listening to feedback. They're they're making changes. They're 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 trying new things. And these things that they're trying, I've noticed that a few other conventions around the country have started to not necessarily mimic, but you can see that other events now are trying new things to to make it more of an experience rather than just you know we've all been to the big cons in london we love going to them they're fun you go there you get to meet celebs you get to do your shopping you get to buy all the things you want to do but conventions used to be a bit different than that it was about going there meeting up with your friends 
people that you haven't seen for months on ends, finding that particular specific comic or toy or outfit that you've been wanting to get. And that's what um, this event is has been doing and, and does so well. It's the fact that, yes, you could potentially go there and buy a comic that cost a thousand pounds trust me i nearly did last year but i stopped <laughs> myself or you can go there and you can buy like five comics for five pounds it's it's it covers the whole spectrum of what it is to be a fan we know we all have those things that are our holy grail items that we need to have and we'll pay a lot more than we tell our spouses it costs <laughs> but it's those things that make conventions like Port of Comic Con special. And yeah, the vehicles, something as, as fun as the DeLorean, as you, you're a big Back to the Future fan. And it's one of those things that you see it when it's screen accurate, it is just immense. Okay. And last year, it was Michael Keaton's Batmobile. So cool. And I so got cool. there early. Now, yeah. I have I have travel anxiety at the best of times. So if I'm traveling to London for a con, you can guarantee I'm going to be there at five o'clock. This particular event at Portsmouth Guild Hall, it's it's half an hour away. I was there three hours before I needed to be there. And I got there just in time to see the Batmobile roll off oh. this trailer. Flames coming out of the jet engine, being driven by the grandchild of the person that owned the Batmobile. This kid That's must have been about 10. But he was doing, <laughs> but he was doing a grand job. He was guiding it in, but... They they have said that there's going to be a, a vehicle there next year, and they've not said what yet. They they're quite good at teasing that out. They've not said what it's going to be yet, but I'm excited because I've got a list of vehicles in my head that it might be. But yeah, it's it's a brilliant event, and as you can tell, because I've not stopped bloody talking, I, I I love this event. It's a very it's a very positive experience that is inclusive for so many different members of the geek fandom whether it be cosplayers or gamers or board gamers, people that just want to go out and embrace the things that bring them joy. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's why I'm I'm more than happy to, to be a, a host and producer of this new podcast, because I get to talk with passionate people. I get to speak with a few of the groups that are behind it. Coming soon on another episode is I'm going to be speaking with the Joker Squad. Now, they're the fantastic cosplayers that make a, their own Star Wars experience within the event, which was fantastic screen accurate replicas and I, I met um a lot of the guys there last year and there was a fantastic obi-wan kenobi just walking around and i sort of went oh, hello there as he went <laughs> past he was like that's my line i was like oh, no, i couldn't help it dog i'm sorry but they're going to be some fun guests but yeah this it's a fun project and again anything where i can talk about fun and positivity is it doesn't feel like work which is when when it does start to feel like work I would not as you know. I'd start backing away. It's not as mm. enjoyable, sure. No, totally. I think it's, it's a great approach that you take to it. But no, as you said, bro, the passion behind it and getting to speak to people that absolutely want to put this on for the people of, of the local area and people that I think people actually travel in as well. Oh yeah, no, so yeah. It's it's it's, it's, it's amazing. It's yeah. making a name, and there's gonna there's more national and international not only guests that are being invited, but people that are traveling to come to see these specific guests, whether it be from those from comics or films, yeah. but people are, are traveling and you know, it, it's, it's early days. This is a, it's, it's only in its first few years, we had the pandemic in the middle. So there, mm -hmm. were, you know, there were a couple of years when it didn't happen, but it's, it, they're very clever with how they use the space. Well, and I, I've had a, a few meetings of what's planned for next year and they're and they're trying to use as much of that building as possible to make it even bigger and even better and it's it's very exciting stuff kim that's amazing that's absolutely amazing you did some panels last year as well are we talking about last year or it was this year wasn't it oh crikey it's, it's, we keep saying last it's year a long, it's <laughs> a long year it's, a, it's been a long long year but yeah no, I, I, it was this year this year i did yeah. some panels it was fun i mean there's there's a local radio station called express fm Mm -hmm. And um, I got to go down there for a fun live recording, which was quite nerve wracking. It's a bit different to podcasting. With podcasting, there's lots of editing where you can make your voice and words sound a lot better than they actually are. That's right. But live radio, that was exciting. That was fun. And I got to go down there and uh, over the weekend, they yeah, there was a, a, a panel about passions, talking about what brings you joy. And uh, I was kind enough to be asked to be a guest on that and also hosted um 
a, a, like a geeky trivia quiz on the main stage. So th again, that was nervous. But mm. as soon as I was there, microphone in hand, sort of the geek of steel persona, this this Frankenstein that I've created, he takes over and the nerves and, you know, it, it sort of it, it goes away. Mm. But if they're not there, as I said, you, then you're not paying attention because mm -hmm. if you're not worried about doing a good job, then you should be. But I had, I had great fun hosting that and, and giving out prizes on the stage and, and having fun with the audience. And um, yeah, that was I, I co-hosted that with Nick from the con. That was um, a lot of fun, like an Ant and Deck type moment where we both got to sort of have a bit of banter on the stage and just have fun with it. And that will be that will be happening again next year as well. There's going to be another That's quiz. Awesome. But... That's awesome. Yeah, but panels. Amazing. Let's talk about panels, shall we, Kip? Because you've got something. Well, when's this episode going live? Well, it's gonna. It's probably gonna go live next week. But yeah, so, so... <laughs> space time continuum. It comes to crazy talk. Your <laughs> yeah. panel has already happened, hasn't it? And it's got it went wonderfully, didn't it? Yeah, I'm. I'm sure it did. It went really well. I, I kind of got a memory lapse in between. Uh, yeah. Well, for the people listening to this, listening <laughs> to this, or watching this next week, <laughs> back in the past, which is going to be tomorrow for me. Yeah, uh, I'm doing a a, a a a main stage live panel with some guests uh, about mental health representation in comic book movies and TV shows, and I am. I'm still nervous. I've Good. done all my my research. I've I've got a couple of notes I put down on my phone, but you know, speaking to one of the hosts today, he was like, "Kibbs, you you speak to people on a podcast almost every week. Uh, just imagine it's a podcast and you can't see anybody in front of you." And I was like, "It's going to be quite hard not to do that." But yeah, I think because it's of how large scale it is, that's what yeah. kind of gives me a little bit of anxiety. But I know once, as you said, like that persona of the brothers geek out will kind of overtake that. And I think that happened when I recently did an interview with Jeff Rowe. My God, dude, I was so nervous before because it was face to face. Usually on Internet, you could kind of yeah. hide it face to face. <laughs> it's all there. It doesn't go away. Yeah. yeah. So. But you have, you know, everybody has rituals. Everybody has things they do before then I did a bit of meditation which really helped me and then I'll do the same thing tomorrow as well and but yeah talking about mental health in comic books and tv shows and movies you know it's a, it's a big part I'm, I'm a both of us are big advocates of men's mental health as well like I think it's an important thing to to put out there because we are seeing it more yeah we are seeing it a lot more yeah. and and I think people need to know it's okay not to be okay Good way of putting it. Very good way of putting it. And um, so what what time is your panel going to be on? Three o'clock. Three o'clock. So yeah, the busiest time of day when everyone wants to have a sit down <laughs> and enjoy a panel. You'll be <laughs> fine, dude. You'll be fine. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm it. sure it's, I will be. It's the it's the nerves, but it's the excitement of it all. You you yeah. You you've got your notes. You're gonna have water. Have a bottle mm -hmm. of water. Yes. We, here's the big. Are you going to be sat down? You're going to be standing up. We're going to be sat down. See that's it. See that's already that's you've got an edge. You can yeah. you can sit back and you relax. Just remember, it's all about posture. Yes, being nice. Awesome. Yeah, the, <laughs> make sure the people at the back can hear your voice, but make sure you're not shouting. Yep. It's again, you you'll get the bug for it. You will get excited by it, and I'm sure you'll want to do it again. Um, so that's something that has happened over the years when I when I've been asked to to host a panel. To host yeah. an event. Um, I, I've been out a couple of times to the Superman celebration in America. Yes, that's right. Which which is a fantastic place. I think with Superman Legacy coming out um in a couple of years' time, it's gonna get busier. Yes, and I'm ready will. for that event. Um, but the first year I went there, I met with I pretty much just emailed everybody that lived in this very small town and became friends with the guy that runs the local rotary club became friends with the mayor of the, of the place. <laughs> it's that type of a tight-knit community. Yeah. But the first year I was there, I was asked by Chad, great guy I'm still in touch with, and said, would you mind coming to my local Rotary Club to give a talk about what you do? And this was a few years ago, back in 2018, when I first started to take this Geek of Steel adventure on the road, as it were. 
and I was I was saying yes to every single situation or invitation because I wanted to get as much experience and as much research out of it as possible. So I, I went to this to this Rotary Club and um, had a fantastic lunch. I can remember there was some fantastic potato salad. This is what my mind remembers. <laughs> Not the notes that I've got written down in my book, but the fact that there was some amazing potato salad followed up with some pie that came with some cool whip that I didn't know what was. But, but <laughs> it's basically just squirty cream. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> I went to this Rotary Club. I was nervous, but I stepped out of a comfort zone and mm. talked about why Superman means so much to me why I'm happy to travel around the world to visit a celebration like that and just what it's like to be a fan of something and not be afraid to embrace what comes with it. Uh, as soon as I got home from that particular celebration, I started making plans to go back the following year because I needed to go back. And again, I was happy to promote this event across my channels. I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of promoting things that I want other people to experience. And this event is one of those things. And about, about a month before this event was due to happen, again, I was reached out by the, the organisers said, look, would you like to host a panel at this year's event? And I was like, I never hosted a panel. This is my first panel. They're going to they're gonna break me in gently. It's going to be sort of talking to a few people about comics and, and you know, just doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, said yes. Then I got another email back pretty much directly after saying, right, so we need you to host a panel on the main stage interviewing Helen Slater and Erica Durantz, Supergirl and Lois Lane from it. Smallville. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Fun fact, Erica Durantz, one of my favourite representations of Lois Lane, had a crush on her for quite a few years. It's like, yeah, this is just like one of those terror nightmares that you get where you wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night where you're like, <laughs> it's, the day of your, it's the day of your exam when you've forgotten to do the research. But again, I stepped out of a comfort zone. I was like, yes, please. This is me being an ambassador for Superman as a, and a Superman fan to be on this stage talking about Superman to people that are a part of the Superman universe. They are a part of this tapestry. Crazy. And yeah, it was a um, very hot day. It was June in real mid-America. And it was outside in a tent, a tent that I've been in many times while at the celebration, but it never looked as big as it did on this day. And it was on a stage and, and the guests had seats, um, but I was standing. I had a little podium. I, I had my cards ready. I had my questions ready. And again, I was I was nervous. I was, I was bricking it. I was. Yeah. But preparation, as always. Mm. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail, Kibler. Mm -hmm. So That's right. I, I had my notes. <laughs> I had. I, I knew what I was going to say. Um, so Helen Slater being just a wonderful supergirl and a wonderful human being, as Erica Durant was, on the morning of that actual event, I was sitting in my hotel having breakfast, and she, she was in the booth behind me. And I was like, oh, oh. my goodness, I'm, I, this is like exciting, but I, I can't say hello. I'm going to she's having breakfast. She's chilling out. I'll just say hello later on. And so I I did. I, I went and joined their autographs. So when I got an autograph and a photograph nice. with them both and introduced myself and it says, but I'm, I'm hosting a panel later on. And I said, Look, I'm not going to lie. This is my first panel. I'm a little bit nervous. And they were both fantastically oh. encouraging and it made it a lot easier for me. And I think what's going to be make this easy for you is the fact that you are hosting this panel with people that you know. Yes. You know what you're going to be talking about. You know what pointers you need to, to talk about and what to stay away from mm -hmm. if you needed to. So it's going to be an interesting, interesting panel. Is it being filmed and recorded? Yes, it will be. It's so we'll get that off MCM Comic Con uh, once it's done. But yeah. Uh... Yeah, I'm I'm excited, bro. It's, it's 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 always good to hear somebody else's uh experience of it and mm -hmm. knowledge of it, which is amazing. And to be honest, I always ask you anyway. Uh, That's fine. It's, 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 whole, <laughs> it's, it's this Jimmy Olsen thing. I love it. I mean, it, I I like giving advice. I try and you know, if somebody asks me a question, I appreciate the fact that someone's thought of me in that mm. moment, and I wouldn't just sort of guff it and say oh yeah try this it might work 
I want you to get as much out of this as possible. So I, I want to pass on advice, definitely not wisdom. I'm not in a specific state in my timeline where wisdom is a word in my vocabulary. I mean, the beard's getting longer, but there's no Gandalf the Grey just yet, even though I've got this one really annoying patch right there. <sighs> It's just a grey circle. <laughs> it's just right there, taunting me each and every day. But I'm happy to give advice. When we can give advice of, from situations that we've gone through ourselves, mm. that is advice that one can take to heart. I would never be condescending and sort of, you know, saying this is what you have to do. This is what mm. you need to do. I'd say try this or try that. Yeah. Um, recently, I was I was speaking with someone about the way that I present myself on, on camera and on video. And they mentioned the fact that sometimes when I'm getting really excited, my hands move around a lot. I can't stop that. Sometimes it's happened in the past where I've like hit the microphone yeah. or hit you. But oh, yes. <laughs> we've, been, we've, been to, we've been to a few screenings and I have yes. accidentally punched Kibler and yes. there's been a moment where I actually lifted him up off the chair. <laughs> but Listening back to that feedback about about me moving my hands, I was like, yeah, I don't want to sort of sit down and sit on my hands and be prim and proper because mm. that's that's not me. That's not passion. That's not how we are. When we get excited, we we talk quicker. We mm. talk loudly. We, we trip up over our words and it feels more real. So just get as much of this out as you can. It's going to be over in the blink of an eye. So remember it, make sure it's recorded, take photographs, take selfies when you're on the stage, make eye contact with the people in the audience that are talking to you, those people that are listening. Be loud, but not too loud. Be assertive, but not, you know, bullying. Yeah. The people that are going to be sat down and listening are the people that want to be there to enjoy a panel and they're going to enjoy it. It's going to be a fun time. And if you get enjoyment out of it, then the audience will as well, as you know, with your podcast. It's, it's about interacting on, on on a big level and sometimes on a personal level. So yeah. it's it's going to be a fun experience. And I'm, I'm sad that I can't be there. I've not been to this particular Comic-Con before. It's, it is on the list of ones to go to. But it's it's going to go well. I'm looking forward to hearing about it when you get off stage and give me your giving me your highlights that's what i'm looking forward to oh thank you bro thank you uh, it means a lot man absolutely means a lot it's uh yeah absolutely it's weird because we when was it me and neil and paul when we went to iceberg lounge we were speaking about doing panels and how difficult it was to get into that and and I, I can imagine the list of people that want to be involved with any type of comic cons. It must be massive, mm. but it was like within two weeks. And then last week I found out and it was like, Oh my God, like this is happening. So it's, it's amazing that you could put something out in the universe and then suddenly it just comes and it's like, what do you do? And they were like, are you ready? And I'm like, uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm ready. Of course I am. Of <laughs> course it. I am. I'm not going to get up. Like I, I, I don't like to say no to opportunity. I try and go head on first and go for it. But mm. there are some things where you have to make that precise kind of decision. But yes, I suppose my journey now and where it's heading to and where I want to take it, I suppose the podcast has excelled in a way I never thought it would have. It was just me and my brother talking randomness of, about what we love in the, the pop culture world and speaking to everyday people. And, and I think that's the one thing as well is like, the passion of speaking to the everyday people that love this stuff has has helped it grow bigger mm. and it's, it's it's amazing that people listen to us and you, you you look at the demographics and you're like wow wow i'm people are listening to me in singapore and people are listening <laughs> to me in you know south africa you're like oh wow it's like you you just don't know when you put your message out there who it will touch and even if it's the one person bro that yeah. that makes such a massive difference and again Reroots back, full circle moment, inspired again by the the man himself, Luke Bug the Geek is still like you know, you 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 look at someone and you see what they do, and get inspired by that. It's uh, we're, we're we're grateful, man. My brother always says it. Luke's always smashing it. Thank you very much for always being a part of the journey as well. That's which is amazing, and and bringing us along as well, bro. Because I think the main important part 
and the reason why I wanted to do this episode was, it, yes, it, I, I get to catch up with a friend, but I get to catch up with somebody that actually inspired us to get into stuff we love as well. Because yes, I did the artwork, but I didn't realize it all start spurring into, as you said, different paths and different things. That's the thing with it. That's, that's, that's why I love that terminology of, of Superman being a tapestry or mm. Spider-Man being a tapestry or, or comics being that starting stitch where anything can branch off into a different scene or a different fandom from the of me just loving Smallville, loving that first yeah. episode of Smallville many, many years ago. It's branched out to me enjoying comics finding myself getting lost in different forms of literature meeting different people like you mm -hmm. meeting the people and being asked to interview the people that create the films that i'm looking forward to seeing it's when you open that door to opportunity when anything can happen it's it opens up not only different parts of your own personality that you you might not have known were inside of you these little things that you can tap into that that can bring out of yourself. When you like something, it's great. You can like something on on you know like a, on a standard level. You can obsess about something and know every single fact about that character or that story, or how many episodes or how many costumes are in that one season. Liking something isn't on one level, as it were. It's it, there's branches of that. As long as you are getting enjoyment out of it, whatever that it may be, then embrace it because you never know who or what experiences will happen. And we've had some fantastic and just unbelievable moments happen to us where we've been asked to come along. And that has come from us embracing what makes us happy. Mm. And as I said, when when you talk with with anybody, I've always had roles in my life where I, I've worked in different aspects of customer service, jobs that sometimes could be monotonous, but I would get to speak with different people and I would rarely meet the same person twice. Hmm. So I can crack on and do my job as always, but also have a chat with someone new. And I, I've, I've spoken with people from so many different aspects of life, whether it be entertainers to caregivers to, to, to anything you could think of what i've learned is is the fact that every single person has got at least one story to tell about the thing that brings them joy and when mm. they're telling you that story this light inside them just just glows and going back to that hand movement it's you see them come alive a bit more yeah. they open they let that they let a guard down that they didn't know that they had up they That's start right. talking about memories and feelings that they had that are associated with this thing that they love could be football could be comics could be cars something comes out of them that and again that we can relate to by liking the things that we love as well and it's as i said everyone's got a story and i i love hearing them which is why i've enjoyed that particular aspect of being a podcast host is that i get to sit back and, and listen not like I'm doing now, which is bloody jabbering on because I can't stop myself. But it's listening to stories. It's listening to what brings other people joy and listening to their life experiences. It's I, I'm lucky to be able to be in a situation where I can sit back and, and take note of what other people talk about and what other people think. And um, it's why I'm excited about my own personal adventure with the podcast of Still but also the Ports of Comic-Con podcast where I can combine those two podcasts together mm -hmm. and, and but also enjoy that process at the same time. Excuse me. Uh, which is amazing. Absolutely amazing, bro. I uh, super excited. And yeah, I can't wait to hear the next episode, dude. And, and, and get some more sneak peeks, bro. Uh, so guys, the link is in the description. Please check it out. It's a, it's a must listen to. And and check out the previous episodes. Luke has got some great guests on there, and just absolutely amazing. And and you bring out you you bring out something amazing, as you said. You bring that light out, bro, mm. because that's 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 a key thing. Because when you start seeing the guest start 
hands going everywhere and you know you could you see the joy in them and 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 I think that's always nice to see and I when I watch your videos and you see your guests light up that's 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 your superpower bro that's I your mean, superpower that's, I mean bro. again that sometimes that's part of the research I I if I know I've got a big guest coming on somebody yeah. that I know a lot about or someone that I don't know too much about you've got to put in the research whether it be about this panel that you're going to be a part of mm. or the guest that you need to speak with, you want to be able to not do a deep dive and sort mm. of bring up something from their past that they've probably forgotten about. It's just learning enough about someone that you can speak to them and possibly get a better interaction out of them with. It's that, again, going back to that, those roles in customer service, I can tell when somebody wants to be there and when somebody's trying harder to listen. When that person is trying harder to listen, my questions would be more in depth. They would be more detailed, and yeah. you're going to get a better, a better conversation out of it. So, yeah, the research is always elemental when it comes to that stuff. So, you can you can put your questions around that research, and again, it's it's just fun to um, knowledge is power, as they say. And so, when you are prepared for an interview, when you are prepared for a panel it's you're not letting luck become an aspect hmm. many people over the years have, have said to us you know that oh you're you're so lucky being invited to these events you're so lucky that companies are, are working with you they said well if you want to come and have a look at my inbox and my <laughs> sent emails and how many get responded to and how many get ignored yeah plus the harder you work Again, the luckier you get. And we both, you know, we've, we've both burnt the midnight oil over the oh, years, yeah. whether, whether it be uh, writing reviews or recording reviews or transcribing interviews, which is an <laughs> absolute <laughs> shot. I've never been a fan of that. Never been a fan of that. But I hate it, bro. I hate it. <laughs> I, I've hosted podcasts over the years when people have said, because I was just getting, you know, I would, if someone says, how do I do what you do? I want to try it. I want to get into it. I'd say, right, go and listen to this podcast. I will give you mm. the starting points of what you need to do. And people are like, oh, this, that's, that's quite a lot of work. So yeah, it's, it's doesn't get, nothing in life gets handed to you. Nope. If you want something and you're willing to work for it, exactly. then just grind on and yep. don't expect results work for results exactly exactly no it's so true it's so true and and i had a lot of the listeners reach out and they're like how do you do it and how do you keep up and time management plays a big key of that i'm a guy who loves his time management i yeah. suffer dyslexia uh probably got adhd as well i'm still waiting for that but it's like <laughs> uh scheduling and organization yeah. has to be yeah. key to it but and you know prioritize what's going to be important to you and get back to those other messages that are not like the important ones you know you've got to really organize yourself I think it's key like again I'm like yourself I use a notepad that helps me massively yeah. during my daily daily to-do lists uh, but then I've got me. reminders okay, yeah this floor is an absolute <laughs> I have got currently on the go I've got one Okay. I've got three whiteboards on the go at any one given time. I can't show you these because there's secrets <laughs> on these whiteboards. <laughs> I've got notepads for every single situation. These particular notepads, these are my these are my babies. Mm -hmm. These are the Daily Planet pocket journals that I thought were sold out. And I found a website that was selling them for three pounds each. That's amazing. This, this, I saw this that post. <laughs> this, this, no, this isn't a plug. But the tankmuseum.org is a fantastic museum. But for some reason, they also sell Daily Planet journals. And I emailed them and said, look, this isn't a scam order. I'm ordering 20 of these books. And like, okay, that's fine. But now I've got one for every occasion. I've got that's one good. for podcasting. I've got one for Ports of Comic-Con. I've got one for for day-to-day -day events because mm. I need reminding to do stuff. Um, and these arrived today. This is like how my head works. Recently, I found a biro that I really like and I can write relatively neatly and still be able to read it. So I just went and bought 10 of them so that I've always got, oh, well, yeah, always no, exactly. got them. You're prepared. Oh, You're prepared, as you said. But I'll lose them in a week. They'll be gone. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be lost, Kim. They'll be gone, buddy. 
Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You heard it there yourself, guys. Like, you know, I'm telling you, a lot of people say we're lucky. It's hard work. It mm. is a lot of hard work and results come from it. But the same, uh, as Luke said, yeah, I don't expect anything from it. If it happens, it happens. But I'm still doing stuff I love. So it yeah. doesn't, it won't be work. But yes, no. there are nights that are long in editing and 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 fun times I, I had a fun time with jeff rose interview but oh my god the editing that was three nights on the go dude i think i was <laughs> up for 72 hours trying to understand new like we we learn all the new editing softwares we we have to learn something new every um, every day almost with the work that we do so it's hard to keep up with everything so organization guys and hard work Passion, 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 passion. So important. So important. If you yeah. love, if you love the medium that you you want to talk about or do like do work with, then absolutely adore it because you know you, the universe works in great ways, and you'll meet great people along your journey, and things will just work. But you've got to put the time in yourself. Uh, but yeah, no. Uh, the listeners listeners will love that, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> They'll absolutely love that. Work? We don't want to do no work. Uh, <laughs> bro, we've got some big things happening in the next couple of years. Well, two years? Two uh, years, two years. Two, two, two years. years, but after two that, years. Who, who knows what is coming after that? Oh, yeah, I know. Um, I know. We've got, we've, got, we've got loads. But, I mean, with James Gunn heading up DC Studios, Superman Legacy has got all the castings in the past couple of weeks. How has that been, bro? How has it treated you? <laughs> um, I've, I've only got a few notifications on my phone when people post. Mm -hmm. um, one still is Henry Cavill. Mm -hmm. um, still my boy, and I'm still, I'm still enjoying what he's doing with everything. Yeah. Uh, another person is, is James Gunn. Whenever he posts anything it's always exciting to see what he's talking about it could be something about his many dogs or his yep. wife or his family or the future of dc comics the future of superman the future mm. of what i class to be my go-to form of entertainment which is comics mm. and the world of comic entertainment but everything that he's been posting recently um when it's official when it's yes. official that's the important word <laughs> it's very exciting and i don't think yet he has missed when it's come to his casting announcements no whether it be jimmy olsen whether it be anybody he's put the work in i don't think he's necessarily listened to what the fans want that's always risky being you know a yes man but a lot of these names that he has announced have been names that have been spoken in different circles of the comic world whether it be mm -hmm. forums or internet pages or, or or fan sites that work with hearsay and and theory but every casting announcement has gotten people talking it's 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 gotten people excited and that's what i'm loving what he is doing but also what he has been doing is keeping it at the source material mm -hmm. he's been saying things like well we're going to be bringing out this film and here's the comics that I think you might like if you think you want to know where I might be going. He's not been he's been quite coy with it. Yeah. He's yeah. Things like, well, if you if you like this story, then I might be using that. And then he'll, he posted like, well, a couple of weeks ago, the images of his his office. Now, I don't mm -hmm. know where that office is. It could be in <laughs> L.A. It could be over here. I know Leavesden is going to be doing yes. a lot of things with Superman Legacy. But on that wall was just some glorious posters of Superman for all seasons. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite stories. It's a beautiful story. Um, we lost the great Tim Sale a few years ago. And I, I, right. I got to meet him a few years ago at Con. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those moments where it was just not about sign these comics because they're going to be worth more one day if you sign them. I was like, no, put my name in this book. Mm -hmm. I need you to write my name in this book. In a way, <laughs> you know, that's like a legacy, as it were. Yeah, of course it is. It's exactly. But it was me thanking him for that story. And yeah. that is what I, I've enjoyed doing at cons, is meeting the people that have created these stories and worked for Superman. And 
I've got, I've shared it online a few times. I've got my replica of Action Comics number one. Mm-hmm. That as many people as I've met as possible that have written for Superman or created Superman or drawn Superman, they've signed my replica. And awesome. uh, Tim Sale was on that. Um, That's amazing. George Perez was on yes. that. Yes. Uh, one day, you know, there's room for James Gunn. Okay? Mm hmm. If you know, if we ever, if our paths ever cross, and who knows, they might. But he mentioned that story on his Twitter. He mentioned um, All Star Superman. He's mentioning mm-hmm. comics, and when he mentions comics, dude, they sell out. They have to be going. They have to go into reprinting, and the comic creators are getting the recognition that they deserve. Yes. If we didn't have these writers and storytellers and creators making these stories. We're not going to have them. And I could go on my high horse and say, you know, <laughs> Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, those two heroes, if they did create Superman, we wouldn't have Endgame. We wouldn't have Spider-Man. We wouldn't have The Boys. We wouldn't have Invincible. Mm-hmm. Everything that has come about goes back to those early days of comic creation. Yep. But James Gunn seems to be doing the right thing by promoting the stories and, and promoting the artwork and um I, I love that and that has inspired me i think we can go for a sneak peek right now kids but in a couple of weeks it's christmas <laughs> it's time for giving back yep um i've not decided on which ones yet but i am doing a worldwide giveaway for three classic superman stories um, i don't know which i'm going to finalize it down to i've, I've cool. got i've got my eyes suspicions i won't announce them just yet i might put it out to a public vote but it's yeah i, I like doing like little christmas giveaways at now and again and, and giveaways throughout the year just just to give back to pay it yeah. forward, as it were but the way that james gunn has been promoting comics recently is inspiring so mm-hmm. that's something that i want to give back to and yeah um a worldwide giveaway for some Superman graphic novels will be in the future. Awesome. Look at this. Look at this, yeah. guys. You heard it here. You heard it here. <laughs> Make sure you are following those channels. Yes. Links are in the description. I oh, know it's amazing, but I mean, I was in Leavesden, uh, Leavesden, 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 saying that all wrong. Uh, the other day when I was uh, doing a, an event at Harry Potter Studios, yeah. I started to see what they're building, bro. Mm. And I kind of asked the guys, excuse me, is that a... Uh, is that where they're going to do all the DC stuff? And they, she was like, I can't say anything. And I was like, yes, confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, confirmed. <laughs> they're massive studios, bro. They look humongous. And we need to get some camping gear. You know, we need yeah. to sh- shack up and get it all ready, get a tent up. And I think we'll just, you know. I've got a sleeping bag on my Christmas list. Sleeping cool. bag, uh, thermals. Yes. Um, big thermos flask will be fine. We just they'll be fine with it. Just hanging out the gate, waiting to see. Yeah, it's all right. They they said we could use the 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 the, the bathroom in uh, Harry Potter Studios. <laughs> that's uh, fine. That's <laughs> fine. I'll move in. I'll, nah, I'll take, an, take an extended leave from work and just um go down the road for a bit and hang out with Leaves. Yes, please. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. All right, bro. Before I wrap this up, and as always, massive, massive thank you no, for your no, time, no. dude. Because I know how important it is for us to keep to schedule and time in uh, we're always grateful to have you on there my brother passes on his love as well bro uh he said he wish he could have joined uh but uh, because of the well, time we, zone no, we'll do that in the future in the new yes. year i want to we, we can either stay up late or get up early we can um we can chat about everything that's happened over this year let's do a 2000 no, definitely that'd be absolutely back. amazing absolutely okay. amazing but i've got a few questions for you bro which are kind of oh. like uh superman related oh here we go yeah. <laughs> I get discovered to be a fake fan and a phony. This is all green screen. None of this is real. It's all fake. Right. Uh, let's go. Here we go. I'm going to go for it. A couple of rapid fire questions. But you know what? I think they're quite meaningful anyway. And and okay. I, I did it because I know that the answers I'm going to gonna get are going to be quite inspirational. So, I mean, what makes Superman such an enduring, iconic character in the world of pop culture? I mean... There's but this is your many, point of view. Yeah. This is there's not many logos, as it were, in the world. Yeah. I mean, everywhere we look, we see a logo for something. But you've got your McDonald's, you've got your Coca-Colas, you've got your Supermans. 
it's a symbol that is seen around the world. It could be on a T-shirt. It could be on a bus. It could be on some graffiti. For some people, it's just another logo. And, but kids are like, oh, that's a Superman logo there. That's a Superman emblem. For me, it's like seeing my home team football club's kit. I feel warmth for it. I feel a connection. I feel admiration to the character, what the character means to, to different people and what it means to me. It's not necessarily just a fictitious character. Yes, it's a character story that I can get lost in. But again, going off on those different tangents, there's, there's something about Superman that I can relate to probably not like the flying or, or the fantastic chin i wear a beard <laughs> so well because i haven't got that i've got a very soft chin if i had a square cut chin oh, this this would be gone in a shop yeah bro me, but, me and you both bro me and you yes, both <laughs> they're, they're, they're a fantastic invention mm -hmm. but it's it's seeing that logo and seeing that emblem and and feeling a connection to it and over the years, it's grown stronger for me. Yes, my first interaction and admiration for the character came through Smallville. But obviously, I was aware of the character before that. It's a character that I grew up with and saw on TV and, and saw in, in comics mm. and on toys and on that classic Superman T-shirt. You know, whoopsie, got enough logos on me today. <laughs> it, it's that logo that stands out. And when I'm wearing it and I know other people are feel the same way it's not an obligation to be the best person I could possibly be but if I'm wearing a Superman t-shirt and I'm on a train or on a bus if I don't get up to let somebody else sit down that's a disservice to the franchise that's me not being necessarily that fan slash ambassador mm -hmm. he's a character that is a fantastic role model he's a character that has done a lot over the years yes we know he's fictitious but there are lots of fictitious characters out there that inspire others and we know superman is powerful we know superman comes from a different planet superman doesn't have to be here superman mm -hmm. doesn't have to do the things that he can do yet he does and we can go into the psychology and the mythology about Superman and Clark Kent being two different people. But sometimes that it's that's what it takes to get through the day, to have a different side to your personality, mm -hmm. whether it be that work mode where you have a really, really shitty day at work and you come home and you open that front door and you've got loved ones there behind that door you leave that negativity as far away from your personal life as you can mm -hmm. you choose which person you want to be life and happiness and and your actions are difficult but it is a choice and superman chooses not only to stay on earth he chooses to be a good person somebody that mm -hmm. is incredibly powerful yet he chooses to use that power for good Mm -hmm. options options are important and superman has some of the most difficult ones to take yeah he chooses the right ones you caught me in a ramble now i'm gonna i'm gonna ramble all night if you keep if these questions are like this you're not gonna sorry bro out. i'm gonna keep it short i'm gonna keep it short no, i promise no, I, but no I'm, I'm not complaining i can be here all night i've got nowhere to be dude this is fine <laughs> now you did great bro this is amazing because you know we got something coming up next year and mm. i can't even say much but what it means to me as well as a character, as a person who yeah. saw it the first time around, it was like, it embodies something completely different to, re I mean, real life is, is difficult to say, you know, I'm looking up to a person that's fictional, but it's just the goodness, man, his, 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 his thought process, the way he thinks he and the way he does stuff and the burden he carries, bro, is immense, bro. Uh, but he's here and he's mm -hmm. doing it, yeah. you know, it's 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 inspiring on so many levels, bro. Uh, and and for me as well as as a character that was first given to me, like he's he spoke to me in those pages. Those you know we see motion comic book artwork now. Yeah. Back in the nineties, early nineties, 
<laughs> that's what happened to me. It was like they came straight out of the pages, and I was like, "Oh my god, this character!" And you know, look what he's been through. Where's he come from? Look what he's mm. doing. Uh, and you know, ever since then, it's it's still there. He's the main arc of all of the characters that we see. And uh, you said it before. You know, we wouldn't have had the End Games. We wouldn't have had the Spider Mans. That's the guy. That's the and OG. It, and, it's, and it's going back from that to the Superman seventy eight movie, which is still a yeah. It's still a staple for so many Superman films now. Is that uh, sorry, superhero films? Yes. Is that people would watch, sit down, and watch that particular film, no matter what director's cut it may be. <laughs> yeah. One of those ones where people get an idea of what a superhero film can be about. And yeah, over the years, though, we we've had different comics and different video games and different cartoons where we've seen different versions of Superman. Mm-hmm. There's that storyline that's been used a bit too much over the years where you know what happens when superman goes bad <laughs> i mean we've seen it we've seen it dozens of times don't yeah. get me wrong it's fun one of my favorite episodes of smallville um called ruby is when mm-hmm. uh, superman gets in contact with red kryptonite in a in a football ring and he puts on the ring and you see the go through his veins with yes. some of that classic early 2000s cgi and he's a bad boy but he's a fantastic bad boy. Yeah. Gets a motorbike, gets a leather jacket, gets some mean sunglasses, and he's like, yep. oh, okay, he's got he's got the sass. But that sass, no matter the kryptonite, was always inside him. That rudeness, that cockiness. Mm. He chooses not to use that when he's Superman. He chooses to be polite. He chooses to be a good guy. There's That's been right. some fantastic moments in comics and cartoons when... Superman has has thanked the police and, and thanked the services that have helped with these dreadful situations. And he's always like that, you know, it's that classic line. Don't thank me. We're all we're all part of the same team. Mm-hmm. And you think and if Superman said that to me, I'm like think, I'm like, yeah, Superman's like I'm on Superman's equivalent. I I'm 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 up there with Superman. He's got that humbleness about him as well as this mm-hmm. That's right. strength. That is something that I'm really hoping that James Gunn brings to Superman Legacy. I'm um, I'm seeing oh. Superman smile in more comics and more representations yeah. recently, and I'm a big fan of that. Yes, yes. We, we don't always want to see Superman save a cat from a tree, but we want to see that balance of Superman the great and Superman the heroic mm-hmm. and everything in between as well i'm not i'm not picky i'm not greedy but there's a lot that i'm hoping for that uh we will get in the next few years oh no definitely it's in good hands definitely it's in good hands all right bro before we go one last question what's okay. your go-to superman comic bro that's going to give away my ideas for this giveaway but oh so oh, over, no. there, over there <laughs> in the background you've got my long boxes Yes. I've got more long boxes under the bed. I've got stacks. I've got my graphic novels. Um, yes. When I first got into Superman in a big way and I wanted mm-hmm. to learn more about the character, it was when Smallville wasn't airing and I needed to keep up this Superman intake in my life. And I, I asked people, what Superman books should I be reading? And they hit me with straight away, oh, you should probably read The Death of Superman. I'm like thinking, what? I'm just getting into this character. I don't want to (laughs) get him killed off. But reading the death of Superman and the reign of the Superman and return of Superman, it was a story where I got to understand what the world was like without him being in it and how these characters that he has worked with over the years and fallen in love with, how they reacted when he wasn't around anymore. And I was like, well, this character clearly means a lot to these people. Mm-hmm. Let me go on this comic adventure and find out more. And over the years, I've I've read as much as I possibly could. There's still plenty of comics out there that are waiting for me. But stories that stand out, um, you've got your all-star Superman. You've got mm-hmm. Superman for all seasons. You've got you've got Birthright. You've got Superman for tomorrow. You've got Superman Earth um, Earth One volumes one, two, and three. Fantastic reads. Mm-hmm. But then you've got your variants. You've got your other world, else world stories like True Brit, which is oh, about yes. a fantastic, hilarious story 
about if Superman didn't land in America, he landed in England. Now it's very tongue in cheek, but it's a, it's a hilarious story. Um, and then there's other stories. There's um the Secret Origin. There's yep. there's there's just so many different stories out there that if you see it again, it's a situation of don't necessarily judge a book by its cover. Mm-hmm. Just just have a look at the first few pages and everything grabs you. But for me, All Star Superman is it's a story that people always recommend because it's it is one of the fantastically well written stories and well drawn yeah, stories. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you've got books like jo- um, Emperor Joker mm-hmm. and just bizarre variants like that and. But going back to something as you know classic as the death of Superman and the return of Superman, from that it makes you want to go back and read those different stories from from the sixties and the seventies. I mean, yeah. go back to the thirties. Yes, there are some absolutely bizarre stories from across the years. Yeah. Some that possibly shouldn't see the light of day <laughs> in modern times, but nonetheless, they're stories that are impactful. Um, I, I've tried creating the top 10 list of Superman stories over the years and it's always difficult for me because I don't want to leave anything out because mm. each story has has got something special in it. There's It could be a line, it could be a certain visual. But there's one particular story, I can't remember which now, but it's a classic scene between Park Kent and Clark Kent on the Smallville farm. And he's talking about how he plows the field each and every year, the same field, the same land, but he could be doing the exact same job, but each time he does it, he'll go back and he'll find a different boulder Mm. in the pathway that wasn't there before. It's about that moment of going through life and, and looking back at things that were always there, but you might not have seen and there's moments like that, that I can just get lost in a book and just the wind gets bloody knocked out on the sails. Mm. There's a such a random storyline. I think it was um, Earth One Volume Two. I could be wrong, um, but it's a flashback and Clark's talking about a, a pet cat that he had. Mm. Now this cat was a stray. I think it had one eye. It was always fighting with other cats. It was tenacious, it was mean, it was strong, but it never gave up. And Clark formed a fantastic bond with this cat. And I was like, a cat? Really? It's, I mean, it's nice, but it's no crypto. And <laughs> I continued reading. And then I learned more about this relationship that he had with the cat and how he related his life as being this outsider, as it were, this creature from another planet and how Mm -hmm. he necessarily wasn't accepted by a lot of the world and you see this beautiful bond begin to happen between him and the cat and the cat sadly passes away but one of the favorite spoiler alert i'm giving the whole bloody book (laughs) essentially each night clark would sit down with this cat and they would look up at the moon and they would be calm and they would be Mm. reflectful and they would have a fantastic peaceful moment and I'm obsessed with the star, with the stars and the and the moon and the planets. And there was a fantastic moment in this book where Superman, sadly, the cat passes away, but Clark decides to to bury the cat on the moon. So oh. every time he looks up, he will have that moment with his cat. But the sort of yes, then sort of right. joking yeah, yeah. bits like in centuries' time when the moon is being <laughs> the moon is being like dug into. They're going to be very confused when they find the corpse of a cat. <laughs> and it's moments nah, but... like that stick out. It's not, yeah. It's not necessarily the the big loud explosive moments. Yes, they're fun and we enjoy them. But it's those moments in dialogue when we get sucked into somebody else's story and we really mm. just get taken out of the moment and just think, oh, this is like the definition of a page turner. And it's exactly that's what I'm hoping that James Gunn's affectionate relationship with comics is going to be brought across in the future of his films and and how he can hopefully build a bridge between both of those fandoms because it's it's always been a turbulent journey whether it be marvel or dc or, oh yeah or, of course of course it's, of course. it's always 
not everybody can be pleased all the time, but yeah, it's a hard one. But he's gonna make a movie that he loves and enjoys, and I think yeah, that's that's the bit. Well done. Exactly, Again, yeah, that's yeah, exactly what he'll do. That's passion. Yeah, he's mm. he did that with the characters he's done with Marvel, with the Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, nobody knew who Guardians of the Galaxy was. Oh, Even man. me reading the comic book suddenly was like, oh my God, Guardians of the Galaxy, he's going to bring these characters <laughs> to the big screen? Like, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. He made it work. Same thing he did with his Suicide Squad movie. He got characters that nobody knew. Yeah. Uh, that was a br- That's an amazing movie. I love mm-hmm. that movie. Peacemaker. Oh my God. Yeah. So uh, good. I so like, no, I think... I'd- I'm not sure how that TV show got made, but it did get made, and <laughs> people are excited for the sequel for the season two. No, so... definitely, absolutely awesome, absolutely awesome, Luke, bro, massive, massive thank you for no. giving your time, man. It's it's no, always is, a pleasure. This is like therapy for me, dude. I can come on and talk about the things that just drive me crazy, the <laughs> things that keep me up at night. So thank you for your time. Good luck editing this. It's <laughs> that's your job. That's the one great thing about being a guest on somebody else's. You don't have to edit, yeah. There's not much <laughs> work involved. It's a very nice job. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely, definitely. No, but awesome. Guys, all the links are in the bio to follow Luke on his journey. We've got some more journeys to enjoy we, next year. Uh, I'll give you a sneak peek there. Uh, yeah. But now, always a pleasure. I want to say a massive thank you to all the people that have subscribed to the channel. The the, the recent intake has been amazing. Wonderful. People that have been commenting on the videos and Spotify, I want to say a massive thank you to you guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. You guys give us the passion to keep continuing these episodes. Uh, this is probably, we're coming close to like 500 episodes now. 500 episodes and it's it's, it's it's a massive thank you to all the subscribers and the people that listen to all the listening platforms apple podcasts you guys man if they had a q a section like they do on spotify i'd love to have a conversation with you guys but they don't apple podcast please listen out q a section <laughs> yeah. Spot, spotify i got sort it out. right sort it uh, out. but yeah you guys the interaction has been absolutely amazing we've got two massive giveaways going on we've got one on instagram we've got one going on one on x which was formerly known as twitter i hate yeah, saying that i can't keep up with that stuff <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> i hate saying that but yeah check it out go join in i've got loads of stuff to give away to you guys just to say thank you to you guys you guys are absolutely awesome you heard a sneak peek there luke's got something coming soon as well so keep yeah. an eye on his page I've, so go I've down put, below and follow the journey i put it out there now i can't i can't come back now from that one <laughs> you can't bro you can't. no can't uh But yeah, massive thank you again, bro. And uh, thank you to everybody that listens in. I love you guys. Thanks for having me on, mate. This was a, a fantastic chat, mate.